I love using these kind of minimal motion graphics in my GIFs and videos that I upload on social media or for my commissioned work. But do you know how you can also make such motion graphics without learning animation? Let me show you today. Yo, what's up friends? This is me Suket. I'm an independent designer, filmmaker and editor. Welcome back to my channel for a new video. When I am making GIFs or videos for my clients, I use graphics. But using static graphics is so old school. To make it interesting for the viewers, I use minimal motion graphics and I love the way how this minimal animations enhance the GIF for the video. Let me show you how I make this minimal animations or as I like to call them minimal motion graphics. I'll be recreating this animation that you also saw at the start of the video and show you my process along the way. On this note, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Your one subscription goes a long way in motivating me to make more such interesting and informative videos. Let's start with the video. I have downloaded this graphic from Freepik. Since I'm using Affinity Designer, I will open this file in Designer. If you're using Illustrator, you can follow these exact same steps. For this graphic, I want to animate the finger pressing the trigger and a spray coming out of the nozzle. Planning this in advance will make our work much much easier and also saves a lot of time in After Effects. If you see the graphic, you will see that the finger is divided in two parts. The top one third that is above the trigger and the bottom two third that is below the trigger. We would need to distribute these three elements on different layers. The topmost layer will have the entire body without the finger and the trigger. Below that will be the top one third part of the finger. Then will come the layer with the trigger. And the last layer will be the bottom two third finger. For better organizing, I will like to rename the layers. It's time to save the file. If you are working in Illustrator, you can just save the file. Since I'm working in Affinity Designer, I will export this file as Photoshop. Let's import this file in After Effects. We have to import this file as a composition so that we get all the layers that we have created. Double click to open the composition. If you have an Illustrator file, you will see all your layers just like I can see my Photoshop layers. And it's all arranged nicely here so I know exactly which layers I have to animate. So first, let's start with the finger. For the fingers, either we can animate the position or animate the scale. I prefer the scale as it also gives a bit of perspective for the pressing action. I will scale the two-third finger part and the one-third finger part will follow it. For that, I will change the anchor point for the two-third finger layer to where the finger joins the palm, just about here. And the one third finger layer's anchor point, I will shift to where it will join the rest of the finger. Just about here. And make the two third finger layer parent of the one third finger layer. Now I will start with keyframing. My first keyframe will be on frame 0. I will go ahead 7 frames and put a keyframe there. Since I just want the scale to happen on the width of the finger, I will remove the link here and scale the width to something around that looks good. I will move ahead another 7 frames and here I will put another keyframe. This will be the point where the finger will come back to its original scale. If I play it back, you can see that the finger looks like it is pressing along the trigger. To animate the trigger, we will be rotating the trigger. For that, we will have to change the anchor point first. The anchor point I will place just somewhere about here. Now going back to frame 0, I will put a keyframe on the rotation property. And moving ahead 7 frames, I will rotate the trigger to the position where it will be after being pressed. Around 26 degrees looks fine. Now again I will move ahead 7 frames and this will be the original position of the trigger. So I will put a keyframe with rotation 0. Playing it back you can see that the animation looks good. Now for the spraying effect. I will create a shape layer and make 4 strokes using the pen tool. The strokes would be such that they would seem to be coming out of the nozzle. I don't want to give any stroke width or color right now. I'll be adding that later on. I will place this layer below the two-third finger layer. Now to make it look more like a spray, I will make the line dotted and for that I will add a stroke to the layer from here. Here I'll be adding a width and a, a white color to the stroke. Next I'll be adding dashes to make a dotted line that will appear like a spray. I will choose around 5 points of dashes and I think this will work for now. To animate the spray, what I like to do is add trim paths and animate the start and the end properties. I will change the values of both start and end properties to be 0 and place a keyframe on frame 0. 
I will move to the point where the trigger is half pressed somewhere around frame 5 and place a keyframe here with the start value 0. Our animation will start from here and around frame 10 I will change the start value to 100. At frame number 10 I will place a keyframe on the end property with the value 0 and move ahead 4 frames and change the end value to 100. Now if I scroll back again, I can see that the spray appears and disappears. Let's see the entire animation once. As you can see the entire animation looks good, but it stops after playing once. We have to play it in a loop. But before I do that, I need some gap between each spraying action. I think a gap of around 5 frames would be enough before each loop starts. So I will place a keyframe on all the layers that I've animated. To get the loop going, I will option click on the stopwatch next to the layers that I have animated. The expression panels will open up. Type in loop out and give a property of cycle. This I will copy paste on all the layers that I have animated. That is it. If I play this back, you will see that the animation is playing in a loop. And voila, my animation is done. Similarly, I have also made these minimal motion graphics as well as a continuation to the one that I just showed you how to make. You can also follow me on Instagram for more minimal motion graphics content. The possibilities here are endless. All you need is a concept and a bit of planning and you can also make some beautiful animations like some of these other minimal motion graphics that I have designed. If you found the video informative, like it, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified about my new videos as soon as I upload them. See you all in the next video. This is me Suket signing off.